Hello, I would like to show you and walk you through every feature of the waiver. This video is a bit overdue, but let's let's get into it. So uh, the waiver is a, a, a three channel mixer, but two of those channels, uh, they have a bipolar VCA on them and there is also wave shaping section. So uh, if we can now look at the simple diagram, and this sort of like uh, catchphrase of the waiver is mix, shape, break. So it can mix uh, signals, it can shape them and it can break them. Uh, so it's sort of like a reactor for signals. So it's like more than a mixer. It's more of an arena for signals to fight and, uh, you know, try to get some dominance. So it's really good for drones or for when you want to like glue signals together and uh, make, make them like really uh, create waveforms that is some sort of intersections of different signals. So let's start with the three inputs, uh, A, B, C. Uh, channel A and C are identical. So these are the bipolar VCAs, AKA ring modulators or four quadrant multipliers. It's pretty much the same thing. So if I pull up channel A, I'm feeding it a triangle. As you see, it's like a simple, uh, simple level. But there is the CV for for the signal A. We'll feed it the slow LFO. And if I pull down the fader, you will see that the the LFO will also invert the waveform, which means it doesn't uh, it doesn't uh, ignore the negative part of the control voltage, but in the negative part of the control voltage, it inverts the original signal. Therefore, bipolar VCA. And this is really good for audio rate modulation, which basically is what ring modulation is. So now in this configuration with the fader down and the CV up, that, that's the ring modulator. So I pull up this modulation frequency to something nice. Nice, yeah. So you can already see on the oscilloscope that's quite a, this is quite the typical uh, ring modulation sound. You can also pull up the original, which will really like strengthen the, the fundamental frequency. So I'm listening now to the shaping output. And the shape output has a bit of a bass boost as well. And that's because with, uh, with a lot of these wave shaping, you, you kind of lose, lose the bass. So, you know, there's a lot of bass missing so I can bring it back in and that's, that's property of the shape, shape output. So I'll take down the modulation. And uh, so, I have these three channels, they mix together after the VCAs and then they go into the shaping section and that's what this shaper is doing. So let's see what the shaper does. So basically it's a, it's like a three-way crossfader, so all the way to the left it's, it's a clean signal. In the middle it's a wave folder, so if I pull the signal up you see that the original triangle folds once and then amplifies. So it's like one, one stage uh, wave folding circuit. And then further you go, it's a sort of a square wave shaper. And it's like a dual square shaper. So it's, it doesn't just make a square wave, it makes this like really interesting steppy square wave but also kind of multiplies as you go up with the level and it dies off like in this like very specific way so that's uh, some sort of like a comparator uh, thing going on so now uh, as you might be uh, familiar with some other um, wave shaping circuits like the timber or pretty much any other wave shaper, there very often is a symmetry control which adds a voltage offset 
to the signal and here the such control is called break and uh, let me just show you what it does on the scope so it like folds the signal asymmetrically and you can of course control that with voltage there is a CV for that uh, let's see what it does with the square wave shaping you hear that there is this like very like PWM type of sound this PVM type of character but it, it, it's a bit, a bit richer because it's not just a simple square wave it's really like a, it's a bit more interesting and the reason why it's called break that if you go really really high it kind of puts so much offset that it's like sort of out of range so you can like use it to like break the signal to sort of like make a make a bit of a pause into the signal so if I for instance take uh, an envelope and feed it into the break this is like uh, the type of breaking that we have in, in mind uh, there is however this, the exclamation mark button next to the break which uh, is sort of like it, it completely changes the function it's not not the voltage offset then but if I flip it it's sort of like a complex feedback feedback system so let's see what it does so you can get these like a bit more chaotic behaviors you get a lot of complexity so with the exclamation mark it pretty much takes uh, some of the square shaped uh, signal and feeds it back into the input so now I've been showing the shaping section independently of the original ring modulator section or the bipolar VCA but like those really shine best when combined and this is like the clever uh, brilliant um, mind of uh, Casper Electronics of Peter Edwards so let's see what it does so um, I'll bring in the ring modulation and then bring some of the shaping Yeah, so this is how you can use uh, the waiver with with a simple waveform. It because it's a wave shaper, it's it's kind of good um, practice to start with simple waveforms. But because like the wave shaping, it, it, it's not super complex. It's just like one stage of uh, wave shaping. It also works really well with complex signals. Uh, so uh, what we have then is where I think it gets like really interesting is as soon as you feed another let's say oscillator or a signal I'll feed another square wave uh, sorry triangle wave into the into the C uh, input and uh, now as you can see the the CV from A is normalized to C so now this is a I can do sort of like a dual uh, ring modulation so I can do ring modulation here on channel A I can bring in channel C and do sort of like opposite ring modulation on channel C bring those down and that's uh, like a really interesting way of, of mixing signals. So now I have like three oscillators feeding in. And I can do a lot just with the ring modulation. And of course it gets like a lot more complex as soon as I engage some of the wave shaping.
Okay. So, so far we have been listening to the shape output. However, there is also the mix output. And basically uh, the three signals ABC, they, they mix and then uh, they go into the wave shaping section. But there is an output from the mixing stage as well. So that's sort of like after, after do, you do this, uh, do this um, ring modulation thing, you can listen, it's pretty much the same thing at the mix output. However, uh, if I apply the shaping, you don't hear it at the mix output. But if you want to hear a little bit of the wave shaper uh, at the mix output, which comes handy if, let's say, you want to use it in stereo, which I just did, so I'm listening to the two outputs in stereo. So now you hear uh, the wave shaping is happening only in the right channel. But if I engage the break with the exclamation mark, which is sort of like a feedback of the square wave shaper into the input, it, it's being reflected on the mix output as well. So you can get this like really interesting like stereo effect with the, with the break. And of course you can see control the break. Um, okay, so now there is channel B also, which doesn't have the VCA on it, but it has uh, another uh, quite uh, interesting feature, and that is uh, the, the bypass or B pass. Uh, so uh, what I like to do, just to use it with a kick drum, and what the bypass does, it basically bypasses the shaping section. So. If I let it go through, I get this uh, wave-shaped kick drum. You hit it more in the right channel. But if I bypass it, uh, it takes it like before, before the wave shaper. So it's 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 really good for something like a kick drum, for instance. So you can have this drone. can put the kick drum into the mix and it is it's gonna like interact with it mostly on the on the shape output so but it's like a lot more pronounced I think uh, we went through most of the features. Uh, what I didn't mention is that there is a shape control for the CV. So let's let's just hear what it does. I'll take the envelope uh, and control the sh the wave shaper with it. So that's like pretty much moving the fader with, uh, with an envelope here, which makes like really beautiful wave shaping now mixed with the ring modulation Yeah, and it's really nice for these like 
metallic sounds as well. So yeah, I think this is uh, pretty much everything about Waver. Uh, we can have a look at the block diagram, which has like everything uh, we've talked about so far. Uh, so that's just another representation of how to look at the the whole thing. Uh, as you as you can see, the there is the uh, at the top left there is the break VCA. Uh, which, uh, yeah, in fact, is, is a sort of like this sort of like feedback system that you can feed in another signal. However, if you if you look at uh, if, at the block diagram, basically the break also looks like just another input, uh, which and it can be like feed it uh, with uh, you know uh, with, with either the square shaper when when the switch is down, or it just has the voltage offset. But if you would feed another signal into the break CV input, you could use it as actually as a fourth input. So technically you can use it even as a four channel uh, mixer. And uh, then yeah, channel A and C have the bipolar VCA, channel B has the special ability of the bypass, uh, then you have the mixer, that uh, also has a um, sort of like a soft clipping uh, circuit at the output. And then, yeah, the mixed signals goes to uh, the folding circuit and to the square wave shaping circuit. And that uh, goes um, uh, into the three-way crossfader, which is the, uh, which is this fader that goes from clean signal to wave folded to square shaped. And then uh, there is the, um, final uh, sort of like mix stage with a bit of a bass boost. So um, boosting the bass is like really interesting when or important when, when you do wave shaping. Uh, a lot of the times you want to mix in the clean uh, fundamental frequency to, to not lose the bass component and, uh, and the waver just does it in the background for you. You don't even need to know about that but I think that's some of the brilliant uh, engineering of Peter Edwards, aka Casper Electronics. And yeah, this is Václav. Thank you for listening and this is the waiver. <laughs>